everyone! Today we're going to be looking at some nonfiction text features. Let's start by saying this three times. Nonfiction is real. Nonfiction is real. Nonfiction is real! Right, a nonfiction book is a true factual story about real things or real events. Nonfiction texts help us give helps give us clues and information. We can find the main idea by observing nonfiction text features. Today we are going to focus on the table of contents, the glossary, and the index. The table of contents helps us to navigate through the book. It tells us where to find something by providing us with a page number. Here you have an example of a table of contents. The table of contents gives you the title, or what we call in, this, in the text, a heading. It's like a title, but it's within the story and separates it into different sections. The heading would be the apple tree, and the page that it would be on would be page two. The table of contents gives us this information. Now, if we look into our text, our example text for today, we have the story of the amazing octopus. Here, as you notice, this is the title page right here, and our cover page, and then we have the title page also with our title and our author's name. You'll notice there's no illustrator's name on here because there's no illustrations. This is a nonfiction text, so instead of illustrations, we have photographs. A little bit further in, still in the front of the book, you have the table of contents. The table of contents will always come at the beginning of the story before any of the reading. You'll notice the first section or the heading that we could read about would be introduction. And the last one would be the glossary. We're going to look a little further at the glossary here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and practice using our table of contents. What page would I look on if I wanted to read about where do octopuses live? Yes, you're right. I would look on page 9. It says, where do octopuses live? That's on page 9. So let's go over to page 9. Here we have page 9. You'll see again, here's the heading, where do octopuses live? And I would read this to learn where they live. Now, going back, we are going to look at our next text feature, which is a glossary. A glossary is a list of words. You'll notice they are in alphabetical order. And it's usually the words that are in the text that are bolded. These bolded words tell us information about the subject that is important. These words are bolded because sometimes there may be a more challenging word or a word that the author wants to make sure that the reader understands. So here, if you didn't know what a frog was, the, the definition of frog is an amphibian that lives in a wet habitat. Many of you may remember that a glossary occurs at the end of a book. Now, as if we are using our table of contents, we can look. And what page would we look on to see where the glossary is? That's right. We would look on page 16. So we're going to go over to page 16, and we're going to check out the glossary. So here you have the glossary. So we have words. Notice this one starts with a B. B is coming before any of these other letters in the alphabet, so they are alphabetized. We have blend, hatch, predators, prey, squirt, venom. Now some of these words you've probably heard before, but you might not know their um, definition or what they actually mean. So what you can do is you can read, okay, predators. Well, I think I know what predators are, but let's read this just to be sure. The N here tells me that this is a noun, person, place, or thing, or animal. And it is animals that hunt and eat other animals to stay alive. And this P12 tells me that I can look on page 12 to read that word. So as well, you can notice that these are bolded words, meaning they are important vocabulary that we need to know and understand to fully understand this text. If we look back on page 12, we should be able to find the word predators. And sure enough, the first word on that page is predators. As we read now, knowing the definition of the word predators, it will help us to understand this text better. So a glossary is a list of important words in the text that help us to understand the subject better. And our last text feature for today is going to be an index. 
Now, my mentor text that I'm using today does not have an index, but here's an example of an index in one of Shel Silverstein's books. Shel Silverstein is a very famous author, especially for his very whimsical and funny poems. Here you have a list of all the names of his different poems, and in this book, it gives you a number. What do you think that number is for? That's right, it's a page number. The page number for before the race would be 135. Well, what page would you look on if you wanted to read about cloud walking? The poem, Cloud Walking. What page? That's right, we would look on page 165 to find the poem, Cloud Walking. And lastly, what if we wanted to read about the poem, Car with Legs? What page would we look on? That's right, we would look on page 41 to read about car with legs. And lastly, if I look on page, let's try and make it a little trickier. If I look on page 18, what poem am I going to find? I'll give you just a moment for that one. If I look on page 18, what poem will I find? That's right, apple with one bite missing. I'm going to find that poem. All right, guys, today you have learned about the nonfiction text features, the table of contents, the glossary, and the index. Stay tuned, and we'll learn some more later in the week.